Hey guys and welcome to How to Gastro. In today's video, we're going to be talking about a very interesting topic and that is trichoriasis, which is also commonly known as the trichorous tricharia infection. So let's get started. Trichoriasis is the infection with the human whipworm parasite, trichorous tricharia. It is called a whipworm because it looks like a whip with wide handles at its posterior end. About one quarter of the world's population is thought to carry the parasite, especially in tropical regions of Africa, Asia and South America. The disease is said to thrive in countries where there is poor sanitary conditions and it is estimated that approximately 800 million people are infected worldwide. So from this definition of trichoriasis, we get that this infection is also called the whipworm infection because the actual parasite that is responsible for causing this disease looks sort of like a whoop, and it's also a worm, hence the name whipworm. And this parasite is actually called Trichorus tricharia and is usually responsible in infecting people who live in very tropical regions, but also countries where poor sanitary conditions exist. And we also get that approximately 800 million people worldwide are actually infected with trichoriasis. So now that we know what this disease is, let's take a closer look at how one can contract trichoriasis. So the whipworm infection is caused by ingesting eggs. This can happen when we put dirty hands or fingers that have contaminated eggs on them in our mouth or by consuming vegetables or fruits that have not been carefully cooked, washed or peeled. The female whipworm may lay 2,000 to 10,000 eggs per day and these eggs are deposited in the soil from human feces. After a 14 to 21 day period, the eggs mature and enter the infective stage. And if humans ingest the embryonated eggs, these eggs start to hatch in the human small intestine and utilize the intestinal microflora and nutrients to multiply and grow. The majority of larvae move into the cecum and penetrate the mucosa and mature into adulthood there. Infections involving a high worm burden will typically involve distal parts of the large intestine. So all this basically means is that one actually contracts the disease from soil that is contaminated with these eggs or by placing dirty hands in our mouth that have come into contact with the soil. An individual may also contract the disease if they eat fruits and vegetables that have been grown in the soil and are not carefully cooked or washed or peeled properly and they ingest them. So if we take a closer look at this image on the right side of my screen, we see what the cycle of the trichorous trichera infection looks like. So first we have the embryonated eggs, which are ingested. And then we have the invasion of the intestine. And we actually have the larvae, which invade the crypts of the intestine. So the egg starts to hatch in the human small intestine and utilize the intestinal microflora and nutrients to multiply and grow. And then we have the larvae, which will move actually into the cecum which is this first part of the large intestine. So from the small intestine, it moves now to the large intestine and it actually penetrates the mucosa here and matures into adulthood. So this is where we have this stage where we have the whoop-like adult worm live in the cecum and colon and shed approximately 20,000 eggs per day, causing more than 200 worms to develop. So this is what this looks like. And this process actually occurs in the cecum and the rest of the large intestine. And from this stage now, we have the barrel-shaped eggs with polar plugs appearing in the feces two to three months after the infection. So these are the eggs which are now contaminate the soil again. And then we have the eggs maturing over a period of two to four weeks in the warm, moist soil. And then we have the ingestion of these eggs again, and the cycle continues. So this is basically how the trichoriasis infection spreads. So something I want to draw your attention to is that it says here growth retardation, diarrhea, anemia and rectal prolapse are very common. So these four symptoms are very major in especially children. But I will discuss that in more detail as we go along in the video. But just keep in mind that when children become infected with this disease, we have severe growth retardation, diarrhea, anemia and rectal prolapse, which is pictured here. So now let's talk about the signs and symptoms of trichoriasis. So individuals infected with this infection may suffer light or heavy infections. Individuals suffering from light infections usually have no signs and symptoms. Individuals with heavy infections will suffer from frequent painful passage of stool that contains a mixture of mucus, water and blood, rectal prolapse, 
and a heavy infection in children can lead to severe anemia, growth retardation, and impaired cognitive development. So when this infection actually occurs in children, it causes quite severe and devastating effects on them. So adults are usually able to tolerate the disease much better. So this is basically what the aspect of the colon looks like when it becomes fully infiltrated with the trichoriasis worms. And that is why the majority of the symptoms are centered around this effect that it has on the colon. We have the frequent and painful passages of stool, which contains mucus, water, and blood. So how can one go about diagnosing trichoriasis? So to diagnose this disease, we will require the microscopic examination of the patient's stool. So here, the characteristic lemon-shaped eggs with the clear opercula at the both ends will be noted. So this is what the eggs actually look like, and we have these clear sections at both ends, which are called the operculas. And if anoscopy, proctoscopy, or colonoscopy is done for any other indications, the wiggling adult worms can be seen protruding into the bowel lumen. So this is basically what a colonoscopy aspect will look like. We see the worms actually infiltrating the wall of the bowel. And a complete blood count must be done to check for anemia, because as we said, one of the main signs of the disease is actually a severe anemia, especially in children. And finally, how can we treat trichoriasis? So the treatment of this disease is done with mubendazole, 100 milligrams orally, twice a day for three days. And that brings us to the end of this video on trichoriasis. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you found the presentation very interesting and informative. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe and share. And please make sure you turn on your bell notifications so you'll be notified every time we have a new upload. If you'd like to download a copy of this presentation, you may do so by clicking the link in the description. Take care and bye for now.